His secret? Blasting more air into the engine. He invents the turbocharger. This is a much faster car than Marcel Renault's. But it's got a turbocharger that uses exactly the same principles he pioneered in 1902. This turbo makes the most gorgeous noise. What Marcel Renault began has been taken to extremes, but it's still essentially the same box of tricks. As motoring expert Graham May explains. So, turbochargers, what are they about? It's a fan. It's a little compressor. An engine works on air and petrol, yeah. which ignites, makes it go bang. That's where it gets the power. But we add a compressor, and we can force more air in the engine, and it goes bang even more. And this is a real one, isn't it? That is the internals of that. So there's one in there, and that tiny little fan spinning away, that makes all the difference to an engine that's big and complex. This clever little fan can blast enough air into the engine to almost double the power of the car. And that's exactly the same principle Marcel Renault thought, yep. hello, if it uses air, yep. we'll get more in, we'll get more out. Correct. And it's all down to that. It's simple as that. But how does Renault's souped-up engine help Troll get gas out of the ground? Important thing to know about fans. When they blow, they also suck. On one side, you feel a breeze, but on the other side is a pressure void sucking air in. Troll uses fans to suck the gas from the earth through these pipes. These are the giant's arteries, connected to its beating heart, its turbos. A fan is not a complicated thing. They all create a flow of gas or air. There's a fan here, and here it is working away. You can't see it because it's air, but you can see the work that it's doing because I can ask it to lift something, this ball. It can hold that up, no problem. But all fans, obviously, have a limit to how much work they can do. So if I tax this one by asking it to lift something heavier, well, we'll see what happens. It's just a bag of flour. No. You see? That bag of flour weighs what? About a pound. And the fans on trolley can shift about 900 of those a second. And they need to be powerful. The fans have to blow the gas all the way from here along these huge pipes to Norway. And it only takes 84 seconds. That's almost 2,000 miles an hour. But that's all just numbers. How much power is that, really? Well, there's only one way to find out. This is a vertical wind tunnel. When the prop fires up, it shifts exactly the same amount of gas as the trolls' fans. How far will it lift me? I'm not a big bloke, 65 kilos, 10 stone maybe. But now all of a sudden I'm a leaf. A small one. This is the same power leak as the fans on board the platform. Every second, Troll's fans move more than a ton of gas. It's amazing what a fan can do. And it stems from Marcel Renault and his turbocharged car. Nearly every part of Troll's amazing design has been created to help those giant fans do their job, pumping billions of cubic yards of gas on their way to 80 million users in mainland Europe, somewhere over the horizon there. 
20 years ago, no one had built a platform on this scale before. Troll is a genuine marvel of modern engineering. Deep in its DNA are some startling connections. A plant pot made it flexible. A grain elevator made it waterproof. A pump fixed it to the sea floor. A musical note made it resistant to the lapping waves. And a turbocharger blasted the gas to Norway. It's simple, really, if you have the right connections.